Good day, everyone. I am Tori Giffen, the Assistant Director of Online Programs here at the College of Education. We are here to talk about the Instructional Design Master Track Certificate Program today. So we are so excited to see so many of you have joined us. And for those of you watching this recording back later, we're glad that you're taking the time to watch this recording. Um, if you have questions uh, throughout the presentation, the Q&A function in Zoom is open. Please feel free to answer those questions. We will answer them as we can throughout the presentation, but we also will have plenty of time at the end of the presentation to be able to answer all of those questions. If for some reason we don't get to your question or you think of something later, you can also always reach us at online programs at education.illinois.edu and we'll be happy to answer your question directly, um, however that may be. Um, also, this uh, presentation is being recorded. Um, so if you get interrupted uh, or want to watch this back later, it will be emailed to you using the same email address that you registered. If you don't get that for some reason, or if the email gets trapped in your spam folder, uh, you can also email us and we are happy to send you the link to that. Um, and that recording should be available for everybody um, around uh, tomorrow morning, um, probably by uh, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. With that, we're getting ready to talk about the Instructional Design Master Track program. So I hope that that is uh, the program that you are all here to learn more about. Uh, we'll be covering about the certificate program, uh, both of the classes that are required and a part of the certificate program, uh, a little bit more about how the Master Track program can stack into a Master of Education here at the College of Education. and. We will also be talking about enrolling and what tuition is and some other program details. And again, as you can see on the screen here, um, if you think of any questions or want to ask us something privately and not in the Q&A chat, for example, you can always reach us at onlineprograms.education.illinois.edu. So on the call with us today, we have uh, myself and then we also have our Assistant Dean of Online Learning and Education, uh, Sangeetha Kavala Christian. Um, if you email with us or when you're in the program, you'll also be interacting with Brianna Davis, our online student advisor, and then Gina Poff, who is online academic su student and services coordinator. Uh, they're not with us here tonight, but their picture here is on the screen, so they have a face to put with the name. Um, they will very much uh, be uh, available and help you throughout your program and answer questions um, if you reach out to us. And with that, I'm going to turn things over briefly to Sangeetha. Thank you, Tori. Um, so I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview and you'll be hearing uh, in detail uh, more. So don't worry if you didn't cat, quite get uh, catch all of what I'm about to say right now. So in this uh, Instructional Design Master Track Certificate Program, you'll learn to solve real world learning and performance challenges. You'll learn to integrate technology with today's learning environments. Um, you'll master concepts um, in instructional and training system design, learning technologies, and more. So the certificate program really is composed of uh, two graduate certificates. That's EPO, uh, two graduate courses, I should say. So that's EPOL 472 and EPOL 483. Each of these courses uh, is for four credits. So by completing these two credit, uh, two courses, you will earn eight graduate credit. And um, you could apply these eight graduate credits towards a degree program if you so wish. Um, what is needed to enroll in the Instructional Design Master Track Certificate Program is a bachelor's degree. Uh, the tuition is $2,384. Um, the certificate program takes about three to five months to complete. And we'll talk about uh, the different scenarios and when you can finish it in three months and when you can finish it in five months. Um, as I mentioned, you'll earn degree credit. Um, and uh, so you can apply the credits you earn from the certificate program towards a, a, a degree program. Um, our courses have weekly live sessions and uh, the program also involves hands-on projects.
Um, so we also wanted to give you a sense of the types of settings uh, where our students might work after they finish their instructional design master track certificate. Um, so many of our students uh, may find employment in higher education, healthcare, IT, uh, business, K-12 and military. This is not an exhaustive list of settings. We just wanted to give you a sense uh, of the settings. Um, and many of our uh, students who have an instructional design master track certificate uh, hold job titles such as instructional designer, curriculum developer, e-learning specialist, trainer, training and development specialist, tra training and development manager, instructional coordinator, and so on. Again, this is not uh, an exhaustive list of job titles, just so you can get a sense of some career options. And now I'm very happy to introduce to you uh, one of our program faculty, and um, uh, she's going to tell you more about the course content and some of our pedagog pedagogical aspects of the course courses, I should say. Uh, Carolina. Yes. yes, you. I was waiting for the slide to change. Oh, yes. Sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tori and Sangeeta. Um, good, uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Carolina Cuesta, and I am a faculty member in the Department of Education Policy Organization and Leadership here at the University of Illinois um, at Urbana-Champaign. I am the faculty who is going to teach the program um, this semester and next semester. So I will talk today about the main courses that you will see in the Master Track Certificate program, right? Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit, a little bit of myself. I am um, originally from Colombia, and I do some research on creativity and creative thinking. So in our courses, we discuss some things about creativity and creative thinking in education specifically. Um, I also research on how to design learning environments that foster creative thinking. And um, I do some design-based uh, research. And um, overall, uh, like the scholarship of teaching and learning, right? Um, but not only I'm in the world of education. Well, yes, but I explore several disciplines during my professional um story or history, right? So I have a myriad of uh, expertise to share in the courses. I'm a microbiologist, so I'm a scientist, and I did a lot of work in innovation management. So I include some uh, innovation um, methods as a pedag pedagogical approach to design learning experiences. Um, and I have my PhD in curriculum and instruction. And I think that it's all about me. I love salsa and not, not the salsa that we eat, but the salsa that we dance. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna talk about um, the courses that we're gonna see in this master track. So the first course that we're gonna talk about is called Instructional and Training Systems Design. And this course is, um, is a foundational course. It's a very, very important course because it will help us to understand and do an overview of different learning theories and learning approaches to design learning experiences. With this course, not only who are involved already in the educational or in education or in the educational business or are teachers who want to improve their skills, 
um, are going to find this course very important, but also, you know, the, the new um, folks that want to learn more about how to design engaging and effective learning experiences. So in this course, uh, we will learn key components of instructional and training system design. We will learn about learning theories, learning models, how to use it in our designs. And um, also we will explore how to identify specific processes um, that are going to help us design this learning experiences. We mainly use a framework in, the, in, the, in this course that is called ADDI. And in this framework, we will do the whole ADDI process that I think we're gonna talk about a little bit more uh, in the next slides. But it's important that you know that this framework will guide your whole design experience and your whole design thinking on how to design learning experience. We will learn also how people learn, right? How to use memory when we're trying to design these specific learning activities and learning objectives and um, learning outcomes. Next. Okay, so um what we see here, what we see here are the main or the major activities that we will engage in the course right so we will work on an instructional design project this is going to be the major activity that you're going to engage in the course and while doing this instructional design project you will have um an instructional design problem we call it problem but it could be an an opportunity where you um, explore how to design um, a training solution or a learning solution um, for this specific situation, right? We also have um, case studies uh, as scenarios because we approach our courses with experiential learning. So we want you to know real life um cases right so you can apply all your learning so we will have some case studies on instructional design and we will work on something that is called the e-portfolio development and the e-portfolio is going to be a tool for your future as instructional designer or to keep improving uh, your own practice in your company or if you're trying to do a transition to a new job and in this e-portfolio we're going to use adobe express and adobe express is a platform that you will learn how to use while um, doing the course and here you can evidence everything that you're learning right and here is um in this tool you will start to identify the main aspect of your design character, because that is something that we also focus in the, this whole program, how you design and think about your own designer character. Next. Okay, the major assignments, we just talked about those. So for the instructional design project, right? As an instructional designer, you're asked to design and develop an education program to fulfill the learning needs of your target target out audience. Here you will you will learn how to identify uh, specific learning needs, specific learning strategies, how to write learning objectives, how to do a learner analysis. So you will have all this background knowledge and this theory on how to design effective and appropriate and engaging learning experiences through this project, right? Um, you will um, select also relevant technologies and how you can uh, integrate different kinds of technologies and tools to your learning experiences. You will learn how to develop learning materials and how to evaluate the learning outcomes. Um, and this part of evaluation is key because you will have the tools to, in the future, 
evidence a specific learning outcome. Next. With the instructional design, design case study scenarios, we will have four different scenarios uh, to work on different design cases. So you will have a background information of a real company with a specific problematic situation that is uh, related to learning. And you will have um, one a scenario for each of the ADI model framework phases, right? So in the first scenario, you will have to do the analysis of um, the new training that they are talking about in that specific scenario, right? So in this analysis phase, you will, you will learn how to do a task analysis, a learner analysis, and a need analysis, right? That that is the first uh, and one of the most important phases of designing a learning experience. In the second scenario, you will use all uh, your design knowledge to design um, and to justify your design decisions when considered a new training for associates in this specific um, case study. For scenario three, you will have the implementation phase, right? So here you can um, evaluate how to implement different kinds of technologies or learning solutions in a specific context, right? So you can um, identify what are the steps that you have to do to implement this specific technologies or activities. And in, in the scenario four, you will uh, evaluate the whole scenario, the whole learning solution and how to evaluate that that learning solution that you thought about is really effective and is really addressing the learning needs that you identified. Um, for this, you will have to choose one of the scenarios. You don't have to do all of them, but in the live sessions that we have for each course for each week, we will try to uh, work on each of the ADI phases. So you will have all the elements to actually pick the one that you like the most and the one that you are actually going to implement all the knowledge that you have. Next. And that is like the overview of the first course, right? So 472 is a foundational course. You will learn about learning theories, models, uh, approaches, how to design a specific learning experiences, how to identify a need, a learner, and then how to design a specific learning materials. And then to complement um, that foundational course, we have EPOL 483 that is called uh, learning technologies and in this course um, you will keep refining right refining your design character you will um, develop skills in identifying selecting and justifying the implementation of learning technologies in the overall learning environment right in something that we call um, teal that is technology enrich and enable learning environments. And on these environments, we're gonna focus in this course on these environments and you will actually um, are going to be able to implement, for example, your learning process from EPOL 472, or you can come up with new ideas for a new learning environment. And um, you will use also all the learning theories and models that you just learned and you will use new learning theories and new models that are used to evaluate how to implement and um, how to integrate technology into a specific learning environment. Next. So for this course, what you see here on my right, uh, the diagram that you see are the specific topics that we're going to focus in this course. So we will have, for example, um, for the first three weeks, we will talk about learning, 
design and technology. So here we will define what is learning, what is design and what is technology. And we will create a definition for the course, a definition that will guide your whole design approach, right? So we are trying to strengthen our design character and we are designing our own designer tool box a toolbox so you can have different um, tools when designing a specific learning experiences. We will talk about trends. We will talk about the history of instructional design. We will talk about, um, I have it here already, immersive learning environment. So here we will have the opportunity to touch on AR, VR, um, and even we have some discussions about AI and how we can use these technologies in our learning environments. We will talk about the future and trends and values of instructional design and actually how uh, these new tools have an impact and how do we perceive the design of new learning environments. And here we also have three major activities or major projects in, in which we're gonna work on. And um, the first one is exploring learning technologies. So each of you will have to work in group. That is another skill that you will develop in this program, how to work in very diverse groups with different interests. But that is also the opportunity because we will have people from all over the world with different um, interests and with different roles. And that enriches the whole conversation. So for this first project, you will choose one learning technology and you will integrate it in a specific um, learning situation. You will record a video and you will explain why this learning technology is interesting, why it's important, and how um, did you integrate it in your a specific learning situation. We also have design case studies on learning technologies and how to integrate these learning technologies into specific scenarios. And here we will have the e-portfolio development and uh, most of the students that uh, work uh, in 472 with the e-portfolio um, development there use the portfolio here. But in this course, the portfolio is optional. Right. What we say is that we encourage the students to keep working on the e-portfolio because it's going to be a tool of your toolbox to show future employers, to show it to your students or to show it to your um, other stakeholders and um, evidence the work and how you approach learning design. So I think it's a very valuable tool for you to keep exploring in both of the courses. Next. Major assignments, done. For the design case scenarios, we have three uh, scenarios, right? Here we will have um, a specific framework that we use in this course, and it's based on the types of activities that we are able to design for different contexts and different learning scenarios. For the first scenarios, we will touch something that is called um absorb type activities right so here we will start with the if we think about learning as a pyramid although it's not a pyramid but let's do this for the, the sake of a representation we will start with activities that are easy for our learners to uh, perform right um then in the second scenario we will go up um uh, in this pyramid, and we will try to use a little bit more higher order thinking activities for our students to develop different skills uh, and attitudes. And for the scenario three, we will use connect activities that for us are the highest order thinking um, activities that our learners are able to, to learn. Um, how do they connect different knowledge? How do they connect different um, skills? So we will learn how to use these different types of activities in our learning designs, but most important, how to introduce these activities in our um, technology and reach and enable learning environments. Next. 
and the e-portfolio development. Um, as I mentioned, we think it's a very valuable tool for you to start working on. We have Adobe Express because if you are going to uh, be part of the program, you will have access, free access to Adobe Express. So it will be a tool for you to use and it's very valuable for you to show this um, to your future employers or your actual employers and see and show them how your design character works, how, uh, what tools do you have in your designer toolbox and what are the evidence of um, some of the projects that you uh, have been working on. So for us, it's a very valuable tool. We encourage you, uh, encourage all of you to use it in all, both courses. Next. Yeah, and that was all. Uh, I encourage you all to apply um, to the program and also to mention that this, um, this program will help you to get credits if you want to actually do something else like a master degree or a PhD degree. Uh, this, the credits go towards that specific graduate program. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everybody who has been uh, submitting questions to us. We really appreciate seeing that. We're going to get more into the program format here, which I think some people have some some questions about. So, talking uh, about the program format, you know, we really think that collaboration is key. There are weekly uh, video sync sessions for both of the courses, um, and then there's also group work, class sessions, and then office hours to incorporate the program format. The weekly sync sessions courses are eight weeks long. Uh, the courses are not offered at the exact same time. Um, they are offered one course and then the other. Uh, so for example, uh, EPOL 472 uh, started in August 26th um, this fall and then EPOL 483, um, which is your still opportunity to apply and register for that class uh, starts October 24, 21st. Um, the first two live sessions of each class is required participation. All of the classes is highly recommended um, in order to get the most out of the classes, how you interact with you know, our wonderful faculty, uh, TAs, other students in the courses. Um, the ses sessions are designed for you to interact uh, with each other um, and in order to enrich your learning experiences. Students can uh, anticipate at least eight to 12 hours of work outside of class each week. Um, in addition to the video sync times. Uh, so Sangeetha had also uh, mentioned much earlier uh, in the presentation, time to completion, we said three to five months. On the screen here is a variety of ways in which you might uh, complete the program. So um, right now for people uh, that would potentially be starting uh, in fall term B, um, you would be looking at a five month uh, completion um, because there is the one month of winter break and then uh, spring A, would you would be able to complete the second course in the program. For those of you that have are already enrolled or maybe have already taken 472 and are looking to uh, come back um, or to complete uh, 483, uh, you would be completing in the four months. And if there are those of you that are taking notes and are looking to potentially start this program next summer even, um, both classes are offered in the summer uh, over eight week formats and can be completed in three months. Um, that's because both of the courses do have some overlap in the summer session. And again, this slide will also be in the recording. So if you wanna take a deeper look at this later, feel free to pause uh, the recording here in the presentation um, and you can take a look at this slide. Or if you have questions about your time to completion or your potential plan for your study education, you can email us at onlineprograms at education.illinois.edu. We're happy to work with you, answer those individual questions for you and help you know let you know exactly when you could expect to complete the program. Also, we have talked about Master Track to Master of Education. Um, so the Master of Education in Instructional Design, Technology and Organization program uh, is delivered uh, directly online. It is the most closest uh, aligned um, with the Instructional Design Master Track program. We have students that are in that program that are instructional designers or looking to be instructional designers. 
that have, been, have completed this certificate program already that are now already in that program. Um, so if you're in this program and you are interested in a master's program, uh, all the courses and credits from this program can apply directly into this master's. They do, of course, also uh, are accepted by all other online programs and uh, programs here in the College of Education, including other master's programs and the EDD program. Here's a, a bit more uh, information about the Master of Education Instructional Design Technology and Organization. If you are looking to apply to that program, do just want to do a quick shout out here and let folks know that applications for spring term A do close December 1st. So if that is something that you are interested in, you can um, could still get that application submitted for spring. And you also can apply to the program while you are enrolled in the Master Trek uh, certificate program. So even if you start the program this fall, you could apply to the master's program um, with your start date, um, to select your start of term to be after when you hope to have the certificate completed. If for some reason your certificate isn't completed by the time that your uh, selected term of study or the semester that you wanted to start, we can work with you and we can recode that to a future semester. So if you are interested in the master's program, you can go ahead and start that application um, now. Um, and that does not prohibit you from getting uh, started with the master track uh, certificate program. Or if you start with the master track certificate program, you also don't have to wait until you're completed in order to apply for the master's program. While you are enrolled in the IDMTC program, uh, you also do have access to some career services and support um, that's provided by myself, but then there are also other uh, campus resources uh, when they are offered online are also open to all students. Um, so that does include asynchronous uh, career services presentations and resources uh, available through uh, the graduate college that are available for online students and then you can schedule individual career coaching sessions with um, myself um, to talk about your individual strategy or questions that you might have um, there. So that is also available for Instructional Design Master Trek Certificate students. Next, getting ready to talk about another important aspect, which is how do you enroll in the certificate program and what are the requirements and program costs? So this program does require a bachelor's degree in order to enroll in the Instructional Design Master Trek Certificate Program. Because this is a graduate level program and these are graduate level courses, we do require a bachelor's degree in order to apply for the program. Uh, during your application, you will also include a uh, unofficial transcript and then a CV or resume um, for the department to review just to make sure that you're fully prepared for the program and that you have a great chance of succeeding um, as we want to make sure that there isn't a mismatch and that you're prepared for the program. If for some reason you are worried about any of that or if you aren't a good fit, please schedule an appointment with us uh, through our email and we're happy to talk about your individual situation, answer specific questions, and make sure that you are uh, qualified um, and are best suited uh, for the program. I also do wanna shout out that there is not an application fee for this program, um, as that is a question that students sometimes ask. So there is not an application fee for the program. Uh, you can go ahead and get that application submitted. The total cost of the program is $2,384. Uh, currently, um, that tuition uh, is uh, right now for this fall and spring um, as of now. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of that current tuition rate, uh, go ahead um, and apply and enroll now. Uh, the individual course uh, uh, cost is also listed there at $1,192. There aren't additional uh, fees or technology fees or things like that um, for the program. Um, if you do apply for the program, I uh, also encourage you to uh, get your books through the library, um, which you do have access for as a student, um, and the books can be uh, accessed through the library here on campus at no cost. Uh, payment options. So the Instructional Design Master Track Certificate Program is a non-degree program, so financial aid is not available for the program, but payment plans are available. Um, you can find more information about that on the link here on the screen now. Um, 
also do want to shout out here while we're on this slide that if you have an employer that is paying for this program or somebody else who is paying this for this program for you, um, they can also, uh, at that same link, you can find information on how to allow them to be able to pay for that. Um, if you have questions more specifically about that, or if um, you get lost in the navigation of that page, uh, you can contact us and we can help uh, coordinate that and get you the information directly um, for you. Enrolling in the Master Track Certificate Program. Uh, so you can see the link here um, to in order to apply uh, for the program, in order to get enrolled. Uh, this is through our non-degree application handled by CITL and the uh, Registrar's Office. Um, when you click on that link, you will see a screen that is very similar to what you see here. In fact, it should be pretty much the exact same. Uh, the blue uh, Start Your Non-Degree Application button is the button that you are looking for. Um, and you will want to start that in order to start your application process. And if you have questions about that, you can reach out to um, our office and then also uh, CITL can also help answer questions for you, but email us at online programs and we can help you answer those questions. Application and registration deadlines so fall. B uh, for 2024 is still open. Uh, fall B closes on October 7th and class starts two weeks later on October uh, 21st. If this is your first class in the program, there is a very short onboarding course that provides you with some additional details and information like how to pay your bill, how to get access to the library, how to get your student ID, um, some more information about the classes and just uh, additional resources to prepare you for taking online courses and to succeed as an online student. Um, so we encourage you to get started on that as soon as you get access. You will also get access to a university uh, email account um, once you are admitted into the program, and we encourage you to check that email very regularly, as that is where you will get information about your courses, how to access your courses, um, and other program information. Um, we will send a welcome email to you uh, upon your first uh, course in the program uh, to both your personal and your university email address, but a uh, you really want to pay attention to your university email address so that you're not in missing important student information. Um, so just want to encourage uh, folks to be sure to do that. Uh, and if you have questions, keep them coming in the Q&A chat, or you can uh, email us at onlineprograms at education.illinois.edu. We're happy to get those answered. Um, if you are looking for courses uh, for spring. Uh, the spring uh, courses are not yet published. They should be available in early October. Um, if you have registered for this webinar, we will be sure to follow up with you um, via email when the uh, applications for spring are open and what those course dates are. Um, but if you also have questions about this, those, you can also email us and we will send you that information once it is available. And then next up here, I'm going to turn it back to Sangeetha very briefly. Yeah, so um, I wanted to sort of uh, wrap up uh, this session uh, by asking you to think about the great information you've heard over the last 40 minutes or so uh, about the program, uh, program faculty, and about other aspects of this program. Um, so, and if you're still wondering why um, you would um, enroll in a program at the University of Illinois at the College of Education, I wanted to give you some final points to think about. Um, so the University of Illinois is a top tier research university um, and we have been ranked number seven by US News and World Reports for our online master's in education programs. Um, and we're affordable for a top tier research university. Our programs are very affordable um, our courses are taught by our world-class faculty. We focus on online student engagement. Um, so you will not only learn from world-class faculty, you will be in class, so to speak, uh, with peers that all, uh, you know, most of them are working adults. They come from very interesting 
uh, work backgrounds. And so you will hear about their experiences and you will learn from your peers as much as you will learn from your faculty. Um, and many of our students have told us over and over again that they find this uh, a very enriching experience. Uh, as online students, you will also have access to our uh, many of our resources, our wonderful resources, including our uh, renowned uh, library system. So I hope you, you give this some thought and I hope um, you will choose to enroll at the University of Illinois at the College of Education. Um, and now we'll, we'll take some more questions. We've been doing our best to sort of answer some of your questions in the Q&A. So if you have more, feel free to put them in the Q&A and we'll do our best to answer them. Yes, thank you, Sangeetha. And thank you everybody who has joined us today and is watching this recording back later. Um, if you are watching this back later, you don't have the option to uh, ask us questions via the Q&A chat. Um, but again, just want to remind folks that you can email us at the online programs at education.illinois.edu. Happy to answer those questions if you're watching this back later, um, whether that be on uh, YouTube or if you get this uh, video link uh, emailed to you tomorrow. Just want to remind everyone again, while we're here in the Q&A session and while folks are thinking of questions that this will get emailed to everyone uh, tomorrow. Um, you should have it by 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, if not earlier, um, in your inbox in which you registered. If for some reason you don't receive a recording of this uh, webinar information session by tomorrow, um, please contact us and we will answer that for you. With that, I am going to uh, stop sharing and open things up for uh, more questions. Let's see, Sangeetha, did you see any immediate questions for us to answer? Let's see. So there is a question which you can probably answer live, Tori, about what time, uh, do we know what time this semester or that we'll have the live sessions or maybe, uh, Dr. Cuesta, do you know what time the live sessions are going to be for the for fall B? For fall, fall, fall B, for 4A UD3, we have live sessions every Thursday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. Thank you. And the important that, thing about the live sessions is that we have uh, a time to discuss about the topic of the week, but you will also have time to work with your groups. So if you feel that you don't have time to actually like work uh, on your project, each live session, you will have time to get together with your group and you will have uh, me and the TA that is involved there to support you in your group projects there. Thank you for that. Let's see. Okay, so here is uh, another question that I can answer immediately. So you are not required to register for both co courses at the exact same time when you are admitted and register for the program. Uh, so just want to start with that. If you do register for both classes at the exact same time, um, when you do that, you will be billed for both classes that you register for um, if you're registering for both of them at the same time. So I do want to uh, call that out. But if you register for one course at a time, you will only be billed at uh, for one course at, at a time while registering. But you are not required to register for both courses at the exact same time. That said, you will still need to complete both of the courses in the certificate program in order to earn the certificate. I see another question here for, do you need to validate your bachelor's degree if you studied outside of the US? We do accept uh, 
bachelor's degree, degree equivalents uh, for folks that study outside of, of the uh, United States. Um, you can upload that uh, unofficial transcript to the program. If we have questions about that in any way, or if we need something more specific, uh, we will reach out to you as a part of the application process. So if you submit something and if there are questions about it, um, we will reach out to you. You won't just be denied from the program without um, anybody reaching out to you for additional information. Um, but, but we do accept uh, equivalents for bachelor's degrees from uh, programs outside of the United States. I can answer the one for the live sessions. So for the live sessions, we want this to be a space for you. And considering that, if you are like very busy, we all have very busy life and you don't have time to be in a specific session, those sessions are going to be recorded. So you can like actually check the sessions after. Uh, but uh, we recommend for all to be there. If you have like specific questions, this is the moment that we can like work on those uh, questions and also because it's a moment for you to work with your group. If you're not able to be there, we just recommend uh, for you to actually reach out to your group and schedule a specific time in which you can all work together in a specific project. But it's not mandatory to be there. And then I also saw a question that I can answer here about the Master Trek program. So while the uh, courses in the Master Trek program are hosted on the Coursera platform, we do issue a certificate uh, for the Instructional Design Master Trek directly from us uh, in the College of Education at the University of Illinois. Um, that program, that certificate is through Accredible, um, and students are able to provide that um, in as a link uh, in the resume or download that certificate and distribute it. It also links uh, directly with folks uh, LinkedIn accounts and other uh, forms of social media in order for it to be shared um, if you want to publish that certificate um, online. Uh, I see a question uh, about paying now, but starting in spring term. Um, so unfortunately, uh, spring term uh, applications and registration is not live yet. Um, so you would not be able to pay right this moment in order to uh, start uh, courses in the spring. Um, courses will, uh, the course information will be published in early October and App registration and applications usually opens on uh, November 1st um, and has in the past and should uh, again uh, this uh, for this fall open for spring on November 1st unless something changes. Uh, we always keep uh, program information about application dates uh, up to date on our website uh, for the program and I will get that direct link and post it in the chat uh, for everyone. So Carolina, there was a uh, part of a question earlier um, about whether the IDMTC certificate is recognized by employers. Um, as such, that's sort of a broad question for us to answer. Um, but I wondered if you have any anecdotal information that uh, you may find relevant to share. Well, and there are like different answers to that question, right? We have some students that actually their employers uh, support them in their professional development. So they encourage them to enroll in different courses so they can um, develop new skills or uh, get up to date in terms of uh, learning technologies if they need that. And Sometimes for some employees, if your employer says that you have to do some professional development, well, you will have to do it and they will um, approve any course that is related with your role, right, in those terms. But we also have uh, some students that um, just present 
this certificate to their employers without their employer saying anything. And they actually value this experience so much that they get raises or they get a new roles or they transition from uh, one job to the other. So the, the good thing about the certificate is that it's an opportunity for you as an individual to develop new skills and to improve and keep learning about something. And sometimes that will get you other places. So it depends. But yeah. I think that's a great answer. Yes, thank you. Let's see. Are there any other questions? Well, while we're looking for other questions and while folks are still doing them, we have about eight minutes left. Um, don't feel the need to answer this uh, full question for feedback on if the session met your expectations until you are getting ready to go or have had all your questions answered. But I do know that people's time is precious and we want to uh, collect this feedback from you. So thank you for everybody uh, who has asked questions and everybody who gives us feedback on this presentation so far. Um, here is a, a good question, I think, for you, uh, Caroline, that just came in. Is there an opportunity to develop uh, their own uh, curriculum uh, alongside this program, or do they work only on case studies? Um, you will have the opportunity to do that. However, we have to consider that these are two courses that are eight week each of the courses. So we will have to work on the scope of the project, right? Developing a whole curriculum is a big, big project. But in this program, you can start building the base of that a specific curriculum. And also we have to consider that we work on groups, right? And considering that we will have diverse um, people working in our groups with diverse interest, uh, we might have to negotiate what kind of project do we want to engage in. But if we come with a solid proposal, I know that most of the people that are in this program want to learn about other areas of knowledge, right? So, so it's not only expanding your knowledge on designing new uh, learning experiences, but designing learning experiences in different areas of knowledge that you're not expert on. So that is also an opportunity. Everything is an opportunity. <laughs> and you can design your own like curriculum on the side if you want to. And we can, if we have time, and we, I say I, uh, I would like support you with some feedback. You can you can share with me everything that you're creating and we have a specific moment that we can work like in office hours because we have office hours for this course too. We can also like um, find those moments to give feedback to whatever you're working on. I think that sounds like a great offer. Any other questions? I'm doing another check to make sure that we haven't missed anything. We said we were going to answer live. Again, if you missed part of the presentation or if you were interrupted, um, this recording will get emailed out to you tomorrow uh, using the same email address that you registered for the presentation. If for some reason you don't get it, uh, contact us at onlineprograms at education.illinois.edu and we will get that emailed out to you. Um, not 
there is a comment which says the email provided doesn't work, but online programs at illinois.edu works. Um, I'm not sure about that. Uh, John, I have your I have your email. Um, I will follow up with you immediately after this presentation directly. So we will get you sorted out. Um, and then I saw a question from somebody who is a current student. Um, contact us uh, directly um, and we will be able to help you out with uh, your situation. That looks like most of the questions. Anybody else have any other questions? Thank you again for everyone who answered questions. Thank you for everybody who attended. Thank you to everyone who is watching this back later. Um, we hope you will consider joining us here at the University of Illinois and the College of Education uh, and hope to see your application and enrollment in the Instructional Design Master Track Certificate Program. Um, Again, if you have questions that didn't get answered, please email us at online programs at education.illinois.edu. It's, it's become a tongue twister after saying it so often. Well, not thank seeing you, any Dorian. other questions. So thank you everyone. Thank you for the feedback on the Zoom poll. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day, no matter what time it is um, for you all. So thank you so much. Take care.